Joining us now for this segment and the next segment is Republican political consultant, 30-year political advisor and confidant to Donald Trump, Roger Stone. He's also the author of the book, The Clinton's War on Women, which is now available in paperback. Right, Roger? That's absolutely right. You can get it at uh, Barnes & Noble or Amazon or go to rogerstone.com or clintonswar.com. This is the book. Dear Every woman needs to read before the election. Right. Barnes & Noble, of course, of course. Do they still say that? Anyway, all right. So I, I don't even know where to start with you. Let, let's start at the, at, at the end of that uh, segment with that sound bite. I thought that was so great, and I can't wait till they make an ad out of it, having people from every race and every, both sexes and everything come on up, average Americans, and say, I am not a deplorable. I mean, that's, that's going to be the way it's going to go the rest of the way, right? Well, I said on Twitter uh, only seconds after she uh, spouted this nonsense that I was proud to be one of the deplorables, along with you, Steve, and Alex Jones, and Milo, and many other uh, Trump supporters. Uh, look, name-calling is a standard tactic for the left. When they can't uh, refute your arguments, when they have no rebuttal to your policy criticisms about their failed policies for America or their actual public policy record, they call you names. Racist, bigot, trigger happy. This may have worked in 1964. Uh, it, will, it will not work now, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I couldn't agree with you more. And of course, uh, Hillary continues to call him a racist and this David Duke nonsense. Uh, you know, I, I, I just I just wish they would just uh, again. I know the commercials will be coming uh, and I wish the Trump surrogates were better equipped too to fire back with, hey, you know, you want to hear the eulogy that Bill Clinton gave excusing uh, Robert Byrd joining the KKK? You want to hear Hillary's uh, saying that, uh, that Robert Byrd was my mentor? And of course, the, uh, you know, the um, all the uh, other uh, instances where Hillary has said racially insensitive things. And as you know, and I hope we see this in an ad, Jesse Jackson, because I did a gimme five on this the other day, Jesse Jackson has praised Donald Trump for being caring and sensitive and inclusive and doing things for minorities. I mean, that we, you know, this, is, this was in the 90s and Donald Trump wasn't running for anything. He came out in a snowstorm at that event to be with Jesse Jackson and Jackson couldn't say enough good things about him. Yeah, I, I just don't think the charge that Trump is a racist holds any water. Look, Steve, today I'm feeling vindicated. It was only two weeks ago that a Clinton spokesman put out a written statement saying that right-wing conspiracy theorist Roger Stone was behind this entire hoax regarding Hillary's health. Well, not quite. Uh, you got it upside it, down, it, Roger. You got it upside down. <laughs> pardon, pardon me, a little tough. Uh, no hoax. Uh, this is factual. Hillary Clinton clearly does not have the balance or the stability or the or the stamina or the mental clarity to be president. Uh, this isn't based on some bogus document that's bouncing around the Internet, Steve. It's based on our own two eyes, our observations. She's constantly falling down. She has the black attending physician carrying an injection device. She collapses when it's only 80 degrees. And then her stories keep changing about what the problem was. She has to fess up and come clean with the American people regarding her health. Yes. Now, I, I want to talk about the health, and let, let's, let's turn our attention to the health. First of all, let's talk about the media coverage of, of attention to her health. They're accepting this pneumonia uh, with, with just, just on the word of the campaign. Uh, or maybe there was a doctor's statement as well. But you'd not die. I had, I had uh, uh, Zudi Jasser on yesterday, uh, not only a very active American Muslim, but also a former congressional physician, former naval physician, who said that if his client, if his patient had passed out that way, um, not making her go to the emergency room would A, be malpractice. But also, he said, that this had to be cardio-related or neurologically related. Where, where the only way you diagnose pneumonia, Roger, is with an X-ray. Otherwise, if you hear rumbling in the chest with a stethoscope, you diagnose bronchitis. You have to see the fluid in the lungs. So where's the media saying, when did you go to the hospital? What hospital? Do you have double pneumonia? Is it one lung? What kind of infection? What are you taking for it? None of these questions. Yeah, the mainstream media is trying to take a, a dive on this entire question. Look, in 1960, Dr. Janet Travell uh, wrote a letter which was released to the press that said President John F. Kennedy did not have uh, Addison's disease. And of course, it, he did, as we learned from his autopsy at the time of his murder. 
By the way, Dr. Travell was rewarded by being given the position of White House uh, physician. So even Hillary's doctors coming forward and claiming that she's healthy um, is sadly not credible. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I think Donald Trump insisted that the debates uh, have a 90-minute runtime with no commercial interruptions. Let's see if Hillary can actually remain on her feet for 90 minutes through a tough debate. It will be interesting to see. It will be. All right, we're going to come back. We have a lot more to talk about with the one, the only, Roger Stone, who, by the way, has his own radio show. We'll uh, tell you about it on the other side. He's got the paperback book. He's got the radio show. Uh, you can't fit it all on a, res on, a, on a business card because it would just be too long. But we'll let him tell you about it when we come back. We'll also take your calls at 877-NEWSMAX, 877-NEWSMAX. This is America Talks Live. So I know I talk live. I know Roger talks live. Now we want America to talk live. So give us a call. We're coming right back. Don't go away. Respect, we could have handled it better in terms of uh, providing more information more quickly. As Monica mentioned, uh, uh, in those 90 minutes, we were putting a priority on making sure she was okay. I should say that as soon as she got into the vehicle, she was alert the whole time and was uh, telling staff that she was fine. Uh, she was actually making calls to aides from the car. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back uh, to America Talks Live here on the uh, Steve Molsberg uh, portion of America Talks Live. And we're joined right now, rejoined by uh, Roger Stone. Of course, uh, you know who he is, Republican 30-year uh, uh, political advisor and confidant to Donald Trump, and uh, also the author of The Clinton's War on Women, now out in paperback. And you have, tell us about your radio show that you do on uh, Saturdays. Here, Steve, the Stone Cold Truth is syndicated on the Genesis Communications Network. We're picking up affiliates. We picked up one in Austin, uh, we picked up one in New York. Uh, you can also hear it uh, live streaming on the Genesis Communications Network website, or you can go to stonecoldtruth.com, where it also live streams uh, and where you can hear it in podcast. Uh, we have had uh, some great shows. It's coming along. Uh, and, uh, Steve, I'm just looking to fill your shoes. I'm just trying to learn how to be a yeah. good radio host. Well, I've heard the reviews, and uh, you're doing great. Uh, you don't need me. You're doing great. All right. So let, let, let me ask you about what Brian Fallon said there, the communications director. He also went on to say, so he says, Hillary, as soon as she got in the car, <laughs> as soon as she got in the car, she just felt you know, cool. And uh, she had a glass of water, which is what Hillary herself said. And she was and he said she's making calls to her staff. She gets to Chelsea's house. She's running around playing with the grandchildren. I mean, how do you believe any of that? I, I believe none of it. Look, Hillary Clinton is a congenital liar. She lied about being sn under sniper fire in Bosnia. She lied about being broke when she left the White House. She lied about uh, being uh, 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 named after Sir Edmund Hillary. She lied about her grandparents being uh, immigrants. She lied about the Whitewater billing records. Uh, she lies about Bill's uh, sexual assaults on various women and her role in the cover-up of same. Nothing she says can be believed. And a fish as my grandfather would say, rots from the head. So nobody who works for her can be believed either. That's a cover story. I still believe the woman is gravely ill, but the Clintons' taste and their greed for power and money is so great that they couldn't pass up this race for president. It's one more time that they can get their nose back in the trough. Now, it is my understanding that if she were to be incapacitated, uh, or if she were too ill to continue, uh, or if, God forbid, she should pass away, then the Democratic National Committee would hold a meeting to fill that vacancy. Uh, and I don't think it would be Joe Biden. I don't think it would be Tim Kaine. I'm fairly confident it, she would be replaced by Michelle Obama. Now, that would assuage the feminist wing of the Democratic Party that is salivating over the idea of our first woman president. Uh, and therefore, they would be fine with Michelle Obama. So you heard it here first. If Hillary drops from this race or is forced from this race by ill health, 
the Democrats will nominate Michelle Obama and I presume retain certified white guy Tim Kaine for vice president. <laughs> wow. All right. That, that's something to chew on for sure. By the way, the hat, which you did not have in the first segment, for those of, uh, of our viewers who were not with us the last time you were on, um, you, your, your mom had recently passed and, and your dad had passed some time ago, but you were cleaning out the house and you found a, a whole bunch of uh, his, your dad's old hats, and I see you're wearing one of them right now. It looks like a, like a derby kind of thing, right? Well, yes, in the UK they call this a bowler, and of course every gentleman owns one. What's ironic, Steve, is my hat size turns out to be identical to my father's. Therefore, I have the hat he wore in the U.S. Army serving his country, the hat he wore as a volunteer fireman serving his community, and then a cross-section of his hats, including this one. Gives me great comfort to uh, wear them, particularly on a bad hair day. <laughs> yeah, you never have a bad hair day. Well, let, let, I'm, I love the hat. Let me ask you this. Um, you, you, you and I were talking a long time ago, and you mentioned that uh, you believed LBJ had a, a body double. There's, uh, there's all kinds of stuff on the Internet about, hey, the woman who came out of Chelsea's apartment uh, was much thinner than Hillary, um, you know, had differences in Hillary. They have side-by-side -side pictures. Uh, whether or not that was a different woman, and I'll ask you if you believe that to be the case, uh, do you think that Hillary has a, a quote-unquote body double? Look, I think anything is possible when it comes to duplicity and the Clintons. On the other hand, I'm not going to go there because the, the Obama psychophants, pardon me, the Clinton psychophants merely use that to try to discredit you. Right. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, just like the entire question of Hillary's health was a conspiracy theory that was somehow promulgated by me uh, and by Alex Jones, which turns out, of course, to be entirely false. It's a legitimate issue based on our own observations. I don't know whether Hillary is using a body double or not. Lyndon Johnson did definitely use one. He had a cousin who was a dead ringer for him. He used him on multiple occasions when he wanted to be seen someplace when he was elsewhere, including, in my opinion, being seen in Fort Worth, Texas on the night of November 21st, 1963. Uh, Phil Nelson addresses this book, uh, this extensively in his book, LBJ, The Colossus. Uh, a book I highly recommend to you by Phil Nelson, uh, published by uh, Skyhorse, my publisher. So uh, it is not unknown. Foreign leaders have used body doubles for security purposes to uh, to mislead those who might uh, uh, th pose some threat to the principle. The Clintons are capable of anything, but let's not get distracted on this question. The issue is Hillary's health, and in, in my opinion, her health is poor. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I could not agree with you more. And, and let, let me ask you this. You mentioned the debate. You alluded to the debate that Donald Trump had, has recently suggested. Uh, you know, how about we go 90 minutes without, a, without a, a commercial break? He's also recently suggested, how about we don't have any moderators? Um, do you think that, I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine, to be perfectly honest with you, I just can't imagine Hillary doing 90 minutes of a debate, I, I, I just seem to, in, my, in the, the back of my gut, it's, it, there's something that says she, she's just not going to be recovered enough, she's going to claim, she's just not going to show up. I just have that feeling. Well, if, if she continues to be ahead by a slight margin in some polls, that she may make that calculated decision. On the other hand, if Trump is slightly ahead, or even even with her, the cost of not showing up may be very great. But Steve, 90 minutes with no bathroom break, uh, no commercial interruptions, uh, hopefully without moderators, um, this could be historic. Uh, I know Donald Trump, I've known him 40 years. The man has amazing stamina. For a guy who's 70 years old. Uh... Okay, well, well, we lost Roger. That was... <laughs> I mean, what's better than Skype, right? What's better than that invention, Skype? Uh, we'll see if we can get him back. Um, I don't know. We got we got two minutes left in the segment. Rogers has been very generous with his time. If we could get him back real quick, we will. But uh, obviously, uh, one of the most interesting things that uh, Roger Stone uh, said and, and predicted is that if uh, Hillary is too ill to uh, continue along the campaign, uh, and the DNC selects someone in her stead, which would be the process. That would be the process. The DNC hierarchy 
gets together and they can pick, they would pick the replacement candidate, and he believes it would be Michelle Obama. But Roger's back uh, 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 with the uh, with the uh, uh, cap and all, the hat and all. All right, Roger, I'm sorry, we lost you about, uh, as you started to talking about what you were just saying. Yeah, uh, the point I was making, of course, is that, that the, the debates could be historic. Right. Now, I am one who has urged Donald Trump to insist that Jill Stein, particularly, and Governor Gary Johnson be allowed in the debates. This idea that uh, that a candidate must have 15% in the polls is not the correct measure. The correct measure is, does a candidate, is a candidate on the ballot in enough states to get a theoretical 270 electoral votes? Uh, the Libertarians, Gary Johnson is, the Green Party candidate, uh, Jill Stein is, uh, and of course, Trump and, and Clinton are. Uh, that should be the criteria, but the Presidential Commission on Debates is not appointed by the president, is not a commission, and it's about limiting debate. I think it's, uh, it is in Trump's interest, uh, just in terms of fairness, to insist on the inclusion of the minor party candidates. And frankly, I've seen polling. The more voters who realize that there really is a true progressive, a true liberal in this race, Dr. Jill Stein, that definitely drains votes from Hillary, because Hillary is not in any way a progressive or a liberal. She's a crony capitalist. As the entire Clinton uh, Foundation scandal proves, the Clintons are all about the right. money. Right. Roger, great to talk to you, my friend. We'll hear you on the radio. We'll read the paperback version of The Clinton's War on Women, and we'll see you real soon back here. Steve, great to be with you as always. Thank you, my friend. Roger Stone, ladies and gentlemen. All right, up next, Steve King, Republican congressman from the great state of Iowa, he will have a lot to say about the race and more. Don't go away.